The K-12 basic education program has a vision that is grounded on human development. It is a vision achieved through enhanced and decongested curriculum. It is a vision that has social economic relevance. But a vision remains a vision without the effective teacher who breathes life to the program. What is your portrait of an effective teacher? Perhaps one way of helping you paint that portrait is to view this video clip. I'm certain that the images have triggered your thoughts and feelings and that's also one way of helping you see yourself and find out whether you have those attributes of an effective teacher. So what is an effective teacher? Let me share with you Khalil Gibran's thinking about an effective teacher. To him, an effective teacher is one who does not bid his or her learners enter the house of his wisdom, but rather bid them to the threshold of their own minds. An effective teacher is a provocateur, always asking thought-provoking questions that would encourage the students to think deeply about the questions and to think of the answers that may not be the same answers given by others. A teacher plays the role of a leader, an enthusiast, an entertainer, making her lessons very engaging and entertaining so that the student's interest can be aroused and sustained. A humanist, a sentinel, an optimist, a collaborator, a revolutionary, trying things out experimenting and exploring so that the students are engaged in lessons that get them transformed as individuals applying the whole brain learning. The development of the 21st century skills is one of the salient features of the K-12 curriculum. May I now ask you, is there a difference between the 20th century skills and the 21st century skills? The 20th century learning is time-based, while the 21st century learning is outcome-based. And that outcome-based instruction is very much found in the K-12 curriculum. The 20th century learning is based on a fragmented curriculum, but the 21st century learning is called from integrated and interdisciplinary curriculum. The 21st century teachers need to review the school curriculum so they could identify areas where subjects can be integrated and come up with strategies on how to effectively link them to enhance learning. An example of this is link between music and real numbers in discussing fractions, particularly in learning about the time signature of music. Teachers of the 21st century require different levels of digital literacy in their daily activities such as writing and submitting reports, creating multimedia presentations, communicating or exchanging information with colleagues and students. Teachers' digital literacy could in turn be passed on to their students. 
This curriculum framework stresses the importance of global partnership for development and global competence. So teachers in a global classroom need to include global issues in classroom discussion. Examples of those issues are peace, respect for cultural diversity, climate change, and global warming. The 21st century teachers need to know how to facilitate the acquisition of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values beyond academics. Teachers must make sure that learning occurs not for students to pass the examinations, but for students to apply what they have learned in real life situations. Teachers themselves must have these 21st century skills so that they can help students develop the same skills. In a fast-changing world, teachers' professional development must be an ongoing process so as to keep themselves updated with the latest trends. Effective teachers should work towards greater collaboration to nurture their own professional expertise. Research is also one of those skills very much stressed in the K-12 curriculum. Teachers must be knowledgeable about research so they could guide the students in these student-driven activities. K-12 teachers need to be updated on the current trends, developments, and issues in the school, community, and the world. They need to apply present realities and develop skills in the students that will make them productive members of the 21st century. The K-12 teachers must possess the five C's. And what are these five C's? The first C is commitment. This question is associated to that commitment. What on earth am I here for? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Somebody said that a life devoted to things is a dead life, a stump. But a God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. Are you that flourishing tree? Anne Sullivan the teacher of Helen Keller has something to share with us. She said, Teaching, like any truly human activity, emerges from one's inwardness. When I do not know myself, I cannot know who my students are. When I do not know myself, I cannot know my subject. Not at the deepest level of my embedded personal meaning. Does teaching have that personal meaning in you? You alone can answer that question and you alone can determine the deepest level of your commitment to the teaching profession. The second C is competence. You may have the commitment, but if you don't have the competence, then what are you going to do in the classroom? Are you going to just be there and follow the lesson that you have been doing for the past 20 years? Or are you competent enough to experiment, to try, to explore, and attune your activities so that you can nurture the inner talents of your own students? The third C is creativity. In the story, Alice in Wonderland, there is a dialogue between the queen and Alice. Alice said, one can't believe impossible things. I dare say, replied the queen, you haven't had much practice. Why? Sometimes I believe as many as 10 impossible things before breakfast. Now, connect that conversation to your own classroom. Do you encourage your students to exercise their creativity? What are those activities that will make them bring out the best in them? What are those learning situations that will encourage the students 
to bring out their creative juices. To be creative is to think outside the box. How many times have you done this, fellow teachers? Each day you have the opportunity to offer your students the world, to give them life-changing knowledge and experiences. Generate and relish the possibilities. Compassion. If you have the heart for teaching, if you have the heart for your students, then you have compassion. It is in compassion that teachers touch the lives of their students. Nurturing each child with love, care, understanding, and patience is not easy, but extremely rewarding. Do you stretch on and on and on your patience and understanding to your own students? Knowing that you have diverse learners in your classroom, knowing that your classroom has some inadequacies, do you still maintain that nurturing spirit so that each day that your child or your student comes to class is a day that is very enriching and rewarding? Character. The first great gift we can bestow on others is a good example. Do we as teachers walk the talk? What do you mean when we speak of character? A person's moral character is paradoxically both the source and the result of his or her actions. Fellow teachers, let me echo the words of Carl Jung. One looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but with gratitude to those who touched our human feelings. The curriculum is so much necessary raw material, but warmth is the vital element for the growing plant and for the soul of the child. Preparing children for the brighter future is the most important work anyone can do. Fellow teachers, together let's do it. Together we can make a difference.